Hi friends, welcome to Mega Technical Hub. In the last bearing session, I explained about the application of bearing and its types. In this session, I am going to discuss about the bearing clearance. What is the purpose of keeping the bearing clearance as per the standard? And what happens if you do not maintain the proper bearing clearance? For any machine equipment like pumps, fans, gearboxes, the bearing clearance plays a major role during assembly. If you do not maintain the bearing clearance, then it will reduce the bearing life, that is L10 life. In turn, it affects the reliability of the equipment. In bearing clearance, there are mainly two types. One is radial internal clearance, second is axial internal clearance. First is what is clearance? Clearance is nothing but it is a clearance between rollers and the raceway. In case of radial internal clearance, it is a total amount that one ring can be displaced relative to the other in a radial direction. In case of radial clearance, there is a play in the vertical direction. You can move the shaft in the vertical direction in case of there is a radial clearance. And in the axial internal clearance, it is the total amount that one ring can be displaced related to the other in the axial direction. Means shaft, there is a play in the shaft in the axial direction. Means you can move the shaft in axial direction when there is a clearance in axial, there is axial clearance. How to measure the bearing clearance? Generally for the spherical roller bearing or cylindrical roller bearing, we use filler gauge. The filler gauge has different blades of different thickness. We need to insert these blades in between the rollers and the raceway to get the proper bearing clearance. Here I am showing the unmounted bearing clearance. Here there is a series, there are mainly the bearing clearance are mainly broadly classified as six types that is C1, C2, C is the normal clearance, C3, C4 and C5. C generally we call it as a normal clearance. Always C2 clearance is always more than the C1, normal clearance C is always greater than the C2, C3 is more than C, C4 is more than C3 and C5 is more than C4. If you remember this order, then you will not forget about these bearing clearances in your lifetime. Again, when you use this C1, C2, C3 in which application? Generally, it depends upon the mounting fit and the operating conditions. For example, in case of machining operations in lathe, drilling machine or milling machines, here the accuracy need to maintain the machining operation within the tolerance. So you should have more stiffness and more rigidity. Then it requires lesser clearance in the bearing. In that case, you need to have lesser than the normal clearance that is C1 and C2. Clearance generally used in case of lathe, milling, drilling machine spindles. But in case of uh, higher clearance, then more than C, some in vibrating screen application, where there are some of exotic gearboxes are there, in that case, the bearings are having C4 clearance. Again, you if you, the machine is operating in the higher temperature zone, again you can go for the C5 clearance. Mainly the bearing clearances you can measure in three steps. One is unmounted clearance, second is mounted clearance, third is operating clearance. That I will explain in the later slides. Again, why the bearing clearance? When you purchase any bearing before the assembly, it has some 
clearance that is we call it as a unmounted clearance okay if you want to assemble the any fan or pumps then we need to fix the bearing over the shaft always the shaft is having higher dimension than the od than the id of the bearing in that case what happens when you push the bearing over the shaft there is a expansion of the inner ring because the shaft diameter is higher so there is the reduction in bearing clearance again when you fix the housing over the outer rays again there will be further reduction in bearing clearance so in both the cases we call it as a mounted clearance next is operating clearance when the bearings are in operation it is exposed to high temperature because of some friction in the rotating components and again some because of some operating conditions environmental conditions then what happens there is a unequal expansion and contraction of the component because there is unequal temperature of the mating surfaces so due to this the temperature of the various parts of bearing will not remain uniform so resulting in varying degrees of expansion which is compensated by the internal clearance if you don't uh, put the clearance during operation then what happens the the raceways the rollers expanded further and clearance will be fully it is fully free loaded then there is a uh, no space for the lubrication then the bearing will cease so we need to have some clearance in the bearing okay as per the standard which standard we need to use that i will explain in the later sessions okay again during the operation why the bearing there is a increase in clearance because after a long period of operation there is a metal to metal contact and there is a friction it causes the wear so bearing clearance increases again what happens when the bearing clearance increases if you have the higher clearance bearings in the machine then it creates the vibration and again there is a damage from the impact loading and there is a sliding motion along the with the rolling motion means when the rollers rolls they are also slides inside the is race phase so it increases the temperature and there is a abrasive wear because of abrasive wear it creates the wear debris and because of wear debris it mixes with the lubrication there is a chances of contaminants and finally the bearing fails so in timely we need to measure the bearing clearance during the shutdown to avoid these circumstances if the bearing clearance is uh, crosses the maximum limit then we need to replace the bearing here one thing i need to explain the preloading preloading means it is a negative clearance means in the case of taper roller bearing generally we will have, have a preload to have the better running accuracy and there is a better guidance in case of it reduces the noise and vibration it compensate for the wear and it provide longer service life and in case of if you have the taper roller bearings you need to measure the clearance by means of dial gauge after the assembly you need to move the shaft in the axial direction and you put the dial gauge you can measure but in case of spherical roller bearings and cylindrical bearings i had explained in the earlier slides you need to use the filler gauge for the bearing clearance what is the effect of this internal preload and clearance because the it already i explained i told initially the bearing clearance plays a major role in the rating life of the bearing if you have the higher clearance then the bearing life will decreases again the if the you have the more preload means there is a more negative clearance then also the bearing life decreases so you need to have the optimum very light preload 
or during the operation there should be a there may be a zero clearance it's okay after in during the operation then it you have the higher bearing life but in case of some conveyor applications we need to maintain the bearing center distance in that case we need to use adapter sleeves adapter sleeves and the bearings have the taper uh, means uh, outer outer race of the sleeve and bearing id is having taper and in this case you you can easily assemble the bearing and you can easily uh, change the bearing center distance here what happens first you mount the bearing over the sleeve and if we tighten the lock nut then what happens it pushes the bearing towards the taper and the bearing clearance reduces here in case in this case you can maintain the bearing clearance suppose the bearing accepted limit is 0.05 to 0.1 for example here after mounting initially if you get the 0.05 clearance then sudden during operation what happens there is a wear and tear then the clearance increases for example 0.07 after that you can tighten the lock nut you can adjust the bearing clearance but should not beyond the 0.1 as per the standard that regarding that adapter sleeve and one more is there that the withdrawal sleeve i will explain in the uh, next sessions if you do want if you can comment in a comment box uh, if you want other than the this bearing case thank you